Welcome back to the Skid Factory. It's been a week for you guys, but it's been, what, a couple of months since we've touched the VK? Yep. Um, Muzz is still here. As you can see behind us, the shed's been um, insulated and lined, but it is still hot as hell, so I'm not too sure if it's... It's not, it's not working. Uh, ...increased uh, productivity or not. So, what's going on with Muzz, mate? Where are about to be up to? So we've had the engine out and obviously repaired the um, head gasket issues. Wasn't really bolted down properly, which will definitely do it. Modified a few things. We basically cleaned everything off that was was done to it. Pulled the wiring back out. Um, we got these manifolds made by Chris um, in Brizzy. Very nice. Um, I've got into the front of the car and just scratched my head a bit. These things are got a really crap front sheet metal on them it really restricts the size of the radiator and and that sort of thing that you can put into them so i just went nuts with the grinder and the saw and just opened it up um, and everything's fitting in there pretty nice uh, it's all hanging there but i'm going to bake a bottom mount and we'll probably do that today uh, and also the radiator needs a whole bunch of fittings welded onto it to um, join up to the engine so we'll do that as well what was the radiator from again? It is a BMW 530D, I think. Mm. Um, it's similar to the one we used in Matt's car, but I think it's a bigger. Yeah. His was off a smaller model, so it was a little bit smaller than this. So um, uh, I think this is going to do the job very nicely. It's, it's actually pretty big, so, and it's also quite efficient, which we found with Matt's car. It's not all about the size with radiators. It's, it's got to have an efficient heat exchange going on, which a lot of old and or cheap yeah. radiators just don't have so that you can flow water through them all you like if it doesn't actually exchange the heat out into the air it doesn't cool the engine down so heat exchanges up here heat exchanges for the wind um, we modified the heads to run our four steam ports because that can help things along um, they'll come out into the the um, radiator uh, i've got a bunch of plumbing ready to go on as well which we may get done this episode um, for all the turbos, water, drains, feeds, that sort of thing. And then we'll probably start chopping up the turbos themselves and putting uh, big wastegates on them. So. Everyone loves chopping up a $3,000 turbo. Three. Yeah. Is that cheap? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Don't be an old dickhead like me, use eye protection. Forty millimeter angle iron comes in handy to make up some bottom mounts for the Plasma Man intercooler. Some leftover rubbers, which were originally radiator mounts, are used to account for flex within the body of the car. Got those intercooler mounts done, it turned out good. Um, we were going to throw the radiator back in and start welding things onto it, but I just was staring at the throttle body trying to figure out what to do, and um, I can't can't leave it until we figure it out. Um, problem with these things is we got to we've got to weld this um, this fitting on. Um, this is a hundred, <coughs> it's a hundred mil, it's metric, not imperial, so this is a hundred and one point six or whatever it is. So that's no problem, we can still weld it. I'll probably weld it from the inside. We've got to take the motor and the sensor and everything off the side, which is no drama. The, the problem is these clamps are a little bit unforgiving. We've got to get that in there. I wanted to cut it back so this was flush, so it looked a bit better, but this, this isn't gonna fit in there if we do that. So 
it's going to have to look ugly and be sitting like that. Um, Just talk about the clamps too, show the Golby's these, ones. These clamps are from Golby's. It's um, sort of a variation on the on the Wiggins theme. Um, the problem with these is that there's not a lot of that. They don't move. It's it's a it's for it's for drag car use, which this is. The engine has to be pretty much solid. Um, everything has to be solid because these don't allow a lot of movement like the Wiggins clamps do. Um, they certainly they're going to seal. have no chance of of not sealing. They got double O rings. Um, sort of a male female setup rather than the Wiggins setup, which is um, two males with a sleeve over the top of it. Um, it also makes it difficult to get to get them off because there's no sort of back and forward movement but um, you just have to account for that when you when you're building the car um, they're also a lot cheaper than a Wiggins clamp so you get what you pay for what's a what's a genuine Wiggins worth yeah hundreds mm. a couple hundred dollars for one this big so we're gonna pull this throttle body apart and hopefully it'll weld nicely and not be a jerk. Uh, also, I'd like to take this moment to apologise to people like Plasma Man that make these beautiful intercoolers, then sell them to hacks like me who have to weld shit onto them. You're not a hack, you're just a chush. These things are like beautifully made and it's, it's, it's a pretty hard act to follow. So, um, if the welds look shit, it's because I did them. If the welds look good, it's because old mate at Plasma Man did it. Dang. Hey, Ved. What is that? Oh, damn. What's happened there? Uh, who knows? I'm picking that this throttle body's not meant to be bolted on there. It's meant to have a mechanical throttle or the, the, the earlier version of these throttles. And someone cough David has gone Barry Butcher on it and how does it even bolt I'm gonna on? call that a hog out you have to bolt it through the other yeah. side well man I'm sure you could have drilled and tapped that but anyway never mind it turns out that these things aren't very easy to get apart or at all um, not really meant to be pulled to bits like other electronic throttles a lot of them you can just take the the um, ele electronic the sensors and the motor out and just get be left with a throttle blade itself but this one you can't um, we googled it and the Corvette forum said don't do it so we're just gonna weld it with low heat and send it and see well, what happens I wonder if the Corvette forums is like the Commodore forums of Australia well where you find Corvettes are a tad more expensive than a Commodore so where you find good info but it's not always correct well we're just gonna weld it and see what happens um, most of the time the throttles handle it okay. So we'll see what it does and David can buy a new one if it doesn't work. Throttle body be cool. Throttle body be cool. all in there, let's make some intercooler pipes.
While the TIG welder is fired up, Al moves on to modifying the radiator. A custom filler neck is required with some Dash 3 and Dash 4 AN fittings added as returns for the steam ports and the turbo cooling lines. A correctly sized drill bit secures the AN fittings in the right position while it's being welded. Some Dash 16 and Dash 20 mail fittings are also welded onto the radiator outlets as Dave's setup runs an electronic water pump that uses AN fittings for the cooling system. Filthy hot again this morning as it is at this time of year. Still no air con. Hook us up, Kai. We finished the um, cold side pipe. Not much, not much of a pipe, it's pretty short. Uh, it should do the job. The radiator's all done. We welded all the AN fittings onto the radiator. Um, it's dash 16, two dash 16 top hoses and uh, single dash 20 bottom. Um, Woody said, why are we using dash hoses? Well, they're already there for a start, but the reason why they use dash, dash and or solid pipes on um, drag cars is because if you have an engine failure, like a head gasket, head lift, and it pressurizes the cooling system, um, a hose is probably gonna let go because there's gonna be a lot of pressure at full noise in a thousand horsepower car. Um, if you bust a hose, lose water, it's gonna go under your wheels and you're gonna end up in a wall. So. Um, it's just basically just a safety thing to try and reduce the chance of that happening. So um, all that stuff was already there, all the hoses lined up, so we, we, we yeah, did pretty, pretty well. Cool, eh? just slap it on. Uh, I got just got a big big um, 16 inch spal, one of the high power, the big motored ones. So there's, if you're looking for a, a fan, spal's pretty good brand. There's actually a whole bunch of different ones, um, straight blades, um, curved blade motor sizes, CFM, so don't just go, I'll have a 16 inch spell because there's heaps of them. Um, you can get them real slim like There's too. a slimmer one, yeah, but it has a smaller motor, so it's obviously got less power, but we've got plenty of room, so we went for the biggest we could get. Um, we probably could throw a shroud and stuff like that on it, but it's, it's not gonna get a lot of long, like sustained use, it is a drag car, so that should be enough to, to keep it happy. See how he goes at roll racing. Oh, you can't roll racing, it's got a cage. So, uh, power cruise. It'll be all right. Dave will just free rabbit on the side. It should be go. fine. If not, we'll make a shroud, but I'm not really gonna bother going to that uh, effort. What are you doing with those turbos? I'm uh, just pulling the compressor covers off so I can weld the, the um, clamp fittings onto them. Ferrules, spigots. How do you pronounce ferrule? Ferrules. It's like jar rule. It's halfway between Will Ferrell and jar rule. <laughs> Just gotta keep that in mind and you'll be fine. I know you struggle with it, Woody. Clocking the turbos ever so slightly helps with lining up the necessary bends to create the hot side intercooler pipes.
The two and a half inch alloy pipe is then tucked on the car to ensure it's in the correct position. The same process is repeated for the other side. Check it. Once the pipes are tacked, the compressor housings are tightened up for good. Both pipes are then removed and the final welds completed on the bench. Before we start on the dump pipes, we've got to uh, sort out this, the wastegates. They, um, there's no provision for them in the exhaust manifolds. We designed all that so these would be in the exhaust housing itself. Uh, in my experience, that gives the best boost control. Um, I know it's not commonly done in, say, the United States, but in Australia, it's very common to mount the uh, wastegate directly onto the exhaust housing via welding. Done it lots of times, works perfectly. So we've got two GFB EX50s and they're going to go on somewhere around there and drop out into the front bumper bar. Um, so we've got to get the hole saw out and maybe two or three hole saws. Uh, hopefully these aren't too hard. Um, some of this later model Garrett stuff is really hard straight off the bat, um, which just makes the hole saw difficult. But the only way to find out is to start drilling and see what happens. If we can't do it, we'll have to get John to uh, put him in his milling machine, but hopefully we won't have to bug him. So let's rip them off and start cutting holes. How good for the OCDR reverse rotation turbos. So much linearity. What do you always like looking through things? It's the flow path, bro. Al tucks some Schedule 10 stainless pipe to each exhaust housing and checks for any fitment issues on the car. Each passage on the exhaust housing is then blocked as they are being perch welded with argon. Preheating the metal helps with the correct penetration of the weld and reduces any chance of the housings cracking during the welding process and on cooldown. Oven and then weld up the other one. Insulating the housing in welding gloves is a DIY way to retain the heat and cool the weld slowly to again reduce any chances of the welds cracking.
<laughs> Let those cool down over however long it takes for them to cool down by themselves and go and eat something and cool ourselves down. Yep, very much. Where's the screamer go? Out one of these holes. There's plenty of holes to choose from. <laughs> not every day you get a pair of expensive turbos and hack at them with a hole saw. Well, not really hack at them, drill, drill through them with a hole saw. But in this application, that's what we had to do. Uh, and it's worked out well. I think you've done a good job, Al. Cheers. A little bit to go still. Screamer pipes and dump pipes. And what else are you doing? What else was there? Uh, we got to plumb all the turbos. We've got all that gear there. And then do some wiring changes. Wiring? And... What are you doing to wiring? Oh, just things are in different places now. We've got new coils. We've got... Um... Haltech IGN 1A coils instead of LS3 to go on. Got to make some coil leads to suit. Is Dave getting an um, IC7? I don't know. Do it, Dave. They're good dashes. The longer it takes for us to do this, the more money he's got, so. Yeah, true that. Corporate stooge things. Mm. That's all happening next time on the Skid Factory. Tune in next week where we shall continue working on Muzz. Thanks for watching. If I wasn't filming it though, does it, does it matter? If I don't film your eyes? Probably doesn't matter whether it to anyone else but me, whether I get shit in my eyes. At least you've got um, shoes on today, not thongs. Yeah. Jandals, sorry. Thongs are apex safety equipment. Nothing keeps you on the ball like having your foot getting burnt. Is that burning the paint? Yeah, it is. Well, maybe it's Dave's car, not Dave, that burns the whole source to to a crisp, but I think we might need a new one. That's pretty old, that one, isn't it? The thread's not happy.